Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happened to stumble across this video, and I post the videos every Wednesday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. And I do that through book reviews, vlogs, book discussions, Bible studies, and so much more. So as the title says, this is going to be my September book haul as well as an unboxing and I'm so excited literally as I was getting ready to do my September book haul the packages arrived a day early which we are always pleased about so I'm going to include the unboxing towards the end because one of my amazing sisters sent me something and I I am so excited so um yeah we're gonna get into the book haul let me take a sip of my coffee though y'all my white chocolate coffee uh from Starbucks with the uh stole stole cone stole cold stone yeah cold stone <laughs> sweet cream creamer in my cup this is actually my third cup of coffee for the day but um it's okay i just finished doing virtual learning with my son it is wednesday so wednesdays i am able to um have time to record earlier in the day because it is self-paced work day so he literally does not meet with his teacher she posts up the assignments we do his work for about two hours and um then i just let him enjoy the rest of the day so today we're recording a haul and i'm excited so i am going to share with you guys the first item i got which is the blessed to be quarter four guide from in touch ministries if you sign up for their devotionals you probably would have gotten this if not you can click down in the link click the link down below to sign up um basically the b series goes through the entire beatitudes and it helps you to memorize the beatitudes scripture by scripture um basically it's three months in a book and it basically will give you a, a verse to memorize so it gives you a memor memory verse a prayer and some information concerning that verse um and there's just the weeks there's no like daily type of thing so you can pick any day throughout that week to do it so this is quarter four i do have quarter three quarter two and then quarter one sadly i have only done week one and the quarter one so i'm a little behind on it but it's okay we all know 2020 has been crazy so I am determined to actually like go through this because I am interested in the Beatitudes. I, the book of Matthew or the gospel according to Matthew is a book I have not studied yet. I've only studied four chapters of Mark, <laughs> all of Luke and all of John. I've studied Romans. I've studied uh, Ephesians. I've studied um, James. I've studied Hebrews 1 through 5. I think it is I've studied. I've studied all of um, Jonah, Ruth, Esther. Like I've studied certain books but for 2021 I have a new plan that I'm working on to really get through the entire book of the Bible. Um, so the book of the Bible? The Bible. Hopefully that just made sense but whatever. <laughs> um, I have that. So like I said quarter four um, and it says finish strong. So yeah this I think is the last one. Hopefully they do something similar to this in 2021 where they're going through like a different sort of parable or something like that because this was really fun at least from when I started week one so yeah but we have that okay so moving on to the one item I actually purchased I put this on Instagram if you haven't seen my post click down below to go to that post but I took a photo of this I saw this at Walmart you know Walmart is a really great place to go to for books especially if you have like a really good Walmart um luckily I have two Walmarts near me I have one in Kearney and I have one in Secaucus um I do also go to another one in Saddlebrook but I haven't been to that one in a minute but the one in Secaucus they be doing it they have a whole book section and i mean they have books on top of books at this one kearney isn't as big with their book section um like at all they have like a tiny little section in the entertainment um like cds and game section but the one in secaucus has an actual like aisle dedicated to nothing but books adult books ya books new adult books uh paperbacks they have a section for the the, the toddlers and the children's it's just it's phenomenal um so they also have a lot of great christian resources um and i think people should definitely check it out so this is the complete guide to the bible by stephen m miller and before purchasing this i did check out the reviews on um what was it amazon it had 996 ratings about a 4.5 star rating so i figured i would get it once i purchased it i came home looked at some reviews and i did see some people say that this was steeped in his own theology um i did try to research him i looked on his website there's not much about exactly what he follows all it says is that he's a christian um on his website and it doesn't specifically say what theology he believes in but he also is the founder of the ceb translation i believe it is so i don't really know much about the ceb translation i've seen it before i don't know much about it so if anyone does know let me know but i want to just state that um anytime i buy a resource it's not the end all be all for me the only resource i would say that 
I would suggest to you guys to purchase that's the end all be all is the Thompson Chain Reference Bible because that Bible is specifically referencing scripture throughout the entire thing. So that literally for me is like an end all be all commentary. But um, things like this I buy because they're always helpful. It, honestly, everyone is going to have their own opinions, even when it comes to study Bibles. Different study Bibles, they are steeped in personal theology and stuff like that from specific people. But you're bound to learn something from all of these resources. So this one says it's an illustrated, easy to follow reference covering both the Old and New Testament. It features book by book background and explanations, fascinating details on Bible times, artwork and photography and helpful cross references. Now, I do like the artwork in here. Really nice pictures. Um, there are timelines. There's charts if I can find. This is one of those type of things. Um, there's maps. There's pictures of like stuff from back in the day i'm trying to find an actual chart like i can't find a chart now here's a map but when i need to find a chart i can't find a chart oh here we go here's one of the charts so um we have that now for this to say it's a complete guide it's not because it only picks certain stories and certain events from each book of the bible to expound on so it's not a completed guide I feel like if you're going to be a complete guide, be a complete guide. If you're not going to be a complete guide, just say it's a guide to the Bible. Like, it's not a complete guide. But I personally think it's still going to be a great resource. I have not, like I said, gone into this in depth. So I'm going to take about two months to really utilize this and see for myself and then come back with my thoughts. But um, I picked it up. Now, on the back, it says $19.99. But when you go to Walmart, Walmart always has their books 40 50% off. So I did not pay $20 for this because you guys know. <laughs> I don't like paying full price for books. I'm just... Mm, my pockets ain't set that way right now so yeah so well that's why i prefer walmart and um amazon at times and sometimes barnes and nobles for barnes and nobles i do have a barnes and nobles membership so barnes and nobles is great but yeah we have this i'm gonna check it out and get back to you guys with my thoughts on it okay before I get to the next book, I do want to say this sweater is so pretty. So here is the sweater. It says Faith Can Move Mountains. I got this. I hope I'm going to say the company's name right. Sarite Apparel. I think that's how you say it. Um, I will leave their website and their Instagram account down below. I think this is such a cute sweater. They have this in shirt form as well. They have other designs on their website that you can check out. So I will leave all the information down below. But I really, really love this. It's a light pink with black font. And the inside of this is so so cozy so if you guys want to check it out i'll leave the link down below i think this was about 35 dollars um so great great sweater but moving on so the next book that i got if you guys have seen my instagram you already know so you guys know i love tessa we know i love her i have all of her books every single book she has written i own i own her bible study i own the dvd right so we all know that i love pearl and sand this is my number one favorite book the number one favorite for me ever um she is my number one favorite biblical fiction author this is my number one favorite biblical fiction book tessa is everything i have gone through this book about two three times probably more than that don't know tabs up on top of tabs up there are sticky notes throughout my book i have written in the margins of this book my mom is actually reading this book now <laughs> but um i have gone through this book so much and sadly this edition is no longer available because it is a 10th anniversary coming up so i'm kind of sad when you're seeing this this is the day after the 10th anniversary however if you click the honest screen you can go watch my reading vlog because i am going to be having a reading vlog which i'm rereading the 10th anniversary edition and um <laughs> she's so pretty you guys she is so pretty i i i am when i saw images of this i didn't know how to feel about the cover um because i'm just i'm so fond of this now what i love is that they stuck to the same sort of color palette so you have the blues with the reds and the neutrals and you have that on this cover but <laughs> she gorgeous if you saw my my, my video on instagram you uh, there, nothing can do this justice unless you have it and see it in person like when you see it in person you can see how beautiful it is but um the foiling on here they did that like there is foiling on the spine and foiling on the back and it's hard to find a good book with foiling on the back and the feel of the book is so soft and smooth now like i said this one is no longer available um tessa did mention that they are discontinuing this they're no longer selling this one because this is a 10th anniversary revised edition so this one has new content in it, it has new chapters uh new things that she included which makes me so excited because i had already given this five stars multiple times so i know i'm gonna love this so I haven't read it yet, but by the time you see this video, my reading vlog will be posted the day of the release. So it comes out October 
6th Tuesday so click the eye to go watch my reading vlog I'm gonna read this on a Saturday I was gonna read it today but I decided to wait till Saturday when my son is gone so I can have the whole day of peace and quiet to read it and enjoy it so I'm gonna do a one day reading vlog I'm just rereading this beauty with a new edition and it's definitely a lot more to it this book comes in at 394 yeah 394 pages and this one ended at 314 so there's a good 316 so there's a good amount of new content um thrown in here you still have the study guide or the like discussion questions in here and i'm just the beauty of the inside let me just show you guys like we know about the red cord i love how they incorporated the red into the actual text so the red is up here you have the first letter with the red and the numbers in the book are red and anytime you have a break i believe there's like a red symbol yeah so i just i love it the the <laughs> I'm not gonna like talk too much on this book because it'd take forever so we have pearl in the sand okay this next book I did feature in my August book haul but I said it was a September September pick so it's called The Edge of Belonging by Amanda Cox this is from Rebel yeah Rebel Publishing which is part of Baker's Publishing House and um this is a very very sad contemporary it's a dual timeline story that follows Ivy Rose and then 24 years earlier it follows Harvey James who was a homeless guy that found an abandoned newborn and how their stories intertwine and collide and it's just beautiful so we have this book the next book I have is from Bethany House which is again from um, Baker Publishing Group they have multiple different branches they have Baker books they have Baker academics they have Brazo I think it's called they have Bethany they have Rebel they have Chosen so I've worked with the company as a whole with their different branches but this is called The Haunting at Bonaventure Circus by Jamie Jo Wright. This is mystery romantic suspense. Um, I do own another one from her. I think it's the Curse of Misty Wayfair or something like that. I know she has another book out. I think she has one or two other books out. I haven't read yet. So I'm thinking of probably binge reading her two books together because I haven't read the other one at all. Like at all yet. But um, this one has circus vibes. It feels like um, sort of like dark and atmospheric. Kind of like a great fall read. So I'm thinking of throwing this in, in probably in November. But um, I'll read the back because I don't really know too much about it outside of that. So it says, Welcome to Bonaventure Circus where misfits go to hide. In 1928, okay so this is more of a histor historical um, suspense. In 1928, the Bonaventure Circus has become a refuge for many. But Piper Ripley was rejected from its inner circle as a baby and is no longer content to leave the, re the reason for that rejection unquestioned. When she receives mysterious messages from someone called the Watchman, she's determined to find him in the connection to her birth. As Piper's search leads her to a man seeking justice for his murdered sister and evidence that a serial killer has been haunting the circus train, she must decide if uncovering her roots is worth putting herself directly in the path of the killer. Decades later, an old circus train depot's futures hangs in the balance. It will either be torn down or preserved for historical importance, and the fate rests on realtor Chandler Falk's shoulder. As she dives deep into the depot's history, she's also balancing a newly diagnosed disease and the pressures of a single motherhood. When she discovers clues to unsolved murders of the past, Chandler is pulled into a story far darker and far more haunting than an abandoned train depot could portend. So, it sounds really dark and atmospheric and probably a great October read, but I'm not going to read it for October. I'll probably read this in November if my TBR game is uh, going to allow that. But yeah, it sounds interesting. I love the cover. I love anything do to do with like circus and mysteries and magic and stuff like that. So I'm excited to see how this goes. Okay, so the last four books come from Ambassador International. I do work with them as a book blogger reviewer and I personally reached out to the company. They normally send out emails um, concerning which books they have up for review, but a lot of the times when companies do that, I will email them on the side for any other books that interest me. And I've worked with this company now for a few books. I'll probably do like a um, video showing all of my books from this this uh, publishing company but I specifically was interested in one book and it was Son of the Father by Andrew Stone and it's basically the story of what is this man's name Barbus the guy that was released in the hours leading up to Jesus the crucifixion um it's in the New Testament they traded Barbus for Jesus so that Jesus could be crucified that guy so it's kind of like his biblical fiction story and um it truly intrigued me so much that I wanted to request it so I did request it as well as three other books which I will show you in a second but um like I said it's a creative storytelling of Barabbas, the man released in the hours leading up to Jesus's crucifixion. Long before his life is traded for Jesus's, Barabbas's family is ruined, a consequence of his own rage. Consumed with guilt, he resolves to put things right, but this seems an impossible task. Huge depths, a man bent on revenge, theft, and murder hang above his head. 
As Barbus struggles to atone and restore his family's honor and to bring himself out of poverty, he meets the new religious teacher. Barbus can't bring himself to trust his wandering preacher, even though his family follows him, until Barbus' life is spared, costing more than he thought possible. In this thought-provoking and gripping novel by debut author Andrew Stone, readers will discover a much deeper meaning as the lives of Barbus and Jesus intertwine between the pages and weave a story of love and sacrifice. So this book was originally published. Let me see if they have the date. Oh, a year ago, 2019. Okay, so not too bad. Um, and this really just intrigued me because you don't hear much about Barbus except that he was traded and Jesus was crucified in his place kind of thing. So um, this intrigued me a lot. So I requested this. The next book I requested is actually sort of like a Bible study type of booklet. And um, it was on the book of Ruth. We know I love Ruth. So this one is Romance and Redemption. Enjoy the book of Ruth by Timothy Cross. And we have this. It's a short little book. It's not a long one at all. 62 pages. Yeah, 62 pages just diving into the book of Ruth and I thought it would be a great um, resource to look through because I love Ruth and I'm always looking to restudy Ruth because I find every time I study Ruth I learn something new learn something different so I requested this and got it the next one is more of a middle grade sort of I don't want to say fantasy I don't think it's fantasy but um like a fairy tale type. I, don't, I don't know how to describe it it's a middle grade Christian fiction story I don't know if it's fantasy or not I'll put it on the screen if it is but um it's called The Prince of Wisdom by R.C. Jones and I want to get into more middle grade books so I decided to give this a go and it says Prince Juna is next in line to become a king of a powerful ancient land but there's one problem Juna isn't very wise and everyone knows it Terrified of the weight of this position, Juna sets off to attain wisdom from an esteemed guru in a far-off forest, but instead he falls into a peculiar course of events filled with exhilarating highs and devastating lows. Will his journey be worth the trouble? Only time will tell. Inspired by the wisdom of the Bible and imagery from the Far East, The Prince of Wisdom is a unique retelling of the classic story of the wise guru and the eager apprentice. With gorgeous imagery and practical wisdom, the tale of the prince touches the hearts and minds of readers young and old. Bound to leave a lasting impact in the mind, you'll find yourself thinking of its precepts day and night. So I'm excited to dive into this. This is not a long book either. It's about 86 pages, so definitely great for like oh, a short read in between my books so i might try to squeeze this in for october because i have a lot of a lot of books i'm reading for october so yeah we have this one the last book i got from ambassador international is of friends and followers by sa jewel and i don't know anything about it i just knew that it was biblical fiction and i wanted to request it i'm being honest I don't know, but um it says Miriam, a widow in Judea, has only one hope for survival. She must go to Capernaum and live as a beggar. On her way to the city, she is viciously attacked and left for dead. A leper, an unlikely and dangerous hero, saves her life, but Miriam's journey has only begun. Miriam's resilience and faith are tested again and again, meeting unlikely friends along the way. Miriam's path winds from Capernaum to the Sea of Galilee to Jerusalem. As she searches for friends and security, she eventually meets a man named Jesus of Nazareth by his miracles and teachings. Miriam and her friends finally find something to believe in, but can they overcome the doubt and treachery that lurks in Jerusalem? So that's what it was. It, it was a biblical fiction including Jesus. Now, I find it hard to find biblical fiction with um, Jesus as a character in it um, because many people are afraid to actually write a biblical fiction, fiction featuring Jesus because they feel like um, it's blasphemy. I think in general, a lot of people think biblical fiction itself is blasphemy. And I'm going to do a whole video. I know I keep saying I'm going to do a video on it, but I'm going to do a video on why I think a lot of Christians should read biblical fiction because I feel like biblical fiction is one of those resources and tools that can help us to really visualize the word of God and see it um in a somewhat a modernized way even when it comes to Christian fiction in general so um yeah this one included Jesus and I know that when it comes to mainstream novels um that include Jesus they are great for the first two thirds and then that last third they pretty much rush through it because they throw in scripture and like use scripture to I guess satisfy the page count but um, I'm hoping this doesn't just throw scripture in. I'm hoping this actually like dives deep into it. So we have this. Okay, so that was a book haul. So let's get on to the unboxing. So my sis Stephanie from Quilts and Beauty and Books. If you don't follow her channel, if you don't subscribe, go to her channel, subscribe, follow all that great stuff. Um, I love her so much. She is literally like my big sis. We talk almost every day. Um, we do buddy reads. We talk about life. We just she's awesome so she did an unhaul video and um in the video she was like if anyone is interested in the books I'll let her know you you know I'll raise my hand because some of those books are books that she we had talked about and I was really really interested in getting so I was like oh I'll take them off your hand if you know nobody wants them 
I'll do it. So we had a couple conversation or whatever. And uh, I got my boxes. So I'm excited. I don't really know what the small box is, honestly. I don't. I have no idea. So um, uh, we gonna get into this. Thank you again, Stephanie. Sis, you. That's it. Um, I have I already texted her prior to this video and was like, I got my box early. Thank you so much. Before I even opened the box, and I'm openly saying thank you on the camera. I I'm excited. So first box. Every and if you guys think I'm joking, everything is still sealed up. Nothing is open. Like. You guys know I like to do unboxings on camera. We know this, so. I was prepared. I had my scissors. Oh, what's this? What's this? What's this? So this is makeup. If you guys don't know, I'm a freelance makeup artist, so makeup for me is like joy. It's everything. Oh, my God. I no. Sis. What? Okay, so we had a little talk about Juvia's place. Um, we had like a separate conversation. But the stuff in here, I... Sis. I don't even know if I want to... Okay, let's just talk about it. So, Fenty Beauty is what I see. I see two Fenty Beauty items. This one is the Freestyle Highlighter Duo in Ginger Binge and Moscow Mule. What? Girl. Girl. F Fenty... And here is what it is. I, I, okay. And before anyone, cause I know someone is going to probably comment on my nails. Okay. So I don't celebrate Halloween at all. We don't celebrate in my house, but as a kid, I did, you know, go trick or treating. I did eat candy. That was a thing. And if I did dress up, it wasn't like no spooky stuff whatsoever. As a kid, I was dressing up as like princesses and, um, things of that nature. As an adult, I don't celebrate Halloween. It, I don't see the purpose in it. I think Halloween is a retarded holiday, personally. And um, obviously, as I grew up, I learned the spiritual side of Halloween. So I do not celebrate Halloween. My son, when he was younger, he wore costumes. Um, even now, as a as um, he is getting older, we don't celebrate Halloween. But like when his school allows him to wear costumes, he'll dress up as like Mario and Luigi and Black Panther. So my nails i personally did them myself this is just a nail kit that i found um it did have some halloween features it has a ghost a bat a pumpkin um a black cat and a skull so it is what it is if anyone wants to you know comment on that you can comment depending on how your comment is i might delete it because i'm trying to stay negative freak on this channel but i do want to address that because i'm sure someone is going to ask me so do i celebrate halloween no do i watch halloween movies i'm not a horror person so no i will watch like the disney cartoons though and Disney movies because that's like I grew up on it so if that answers your questions just because I'm a Christian doesn't mean I don't enjoy life um and like I said I watch Supernatural the TV show and that is pretty much some people would say it's demonic but um I like Supernatural so I'm gonna have a whole conversation on like what I do outside of like the Christian stuff um and what I mean like what do I enjoy in the secular world because people are always asking me if I read only biblical fiction no I don't read just biblical fiction I read fantasies I read romances I read all types of genres so I digress I wanted to just mention that so back to this okay so this is like I said the dual highlighter um I'm like excited Ooh, that's pretty I'm a highlighter girl so, and my clients always love highlighters. And this is the All Over Diamond Veil in Cognac Candy, I think that's what that says. Oh, she's gorgeous. <laughs> so, if you guys hear that noise, my landlord is upstairs and they're moving chairs. So, Mark Jacob, yes. This is the All Over Foil Luminizer in... I think it's a showstopper, but it says Omega Glaze as well. I don't really know. But how you open this? You pop the button. Ooh, she's pretty. She is pretty. That is gorgeous. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to tell, but the shimmer in that is gorgeous. So. Oh, another tart palette. Yes, this is a toasted tartlet palette. And, um, yes, sis, yes. That just smelled really delicious. Don't ask me why. I don't know why that just smelled good to me. <laughs> That's so weird. I'm trying to go fast because I don't want this to be like a super, super long. And I definitely want to get to the box. Of course. Um, and then, okay, the Juvia's Place stuff is in here. So we did discuss Juvia Place. Um, and I'm finding out that Juvia's Place is having like a lot of issues recently, which I don't, I don't know what that's about. Um, like a lot of 
makeup gurus and stuff are like talking about Juvia's place. So let's talk. This is a Saharan palette by Juvia. And um, oh, she's gorgeous. That lilac color is everything. I like that. This is the Saharian 2 palette. Here's the packaging. I love Juvia's. Oh, sorry about the lighting. It's been real gloomy off and on. So I have my ring light right here instead of in front of me because my bed is behind the camera. So sorry about the lighting. Oh, yes. That blue is everything. And this color is gorgeous. This blue and that, everything. Crease colors, outer corner. I have my makeup videos coming back um, on my actual beauty channel and on this channel. This is the festival palette. Dark fun colors. Um, these do have names on them. I, I wouldn't even try to pronounce those, but those are the colors. This is the mask. <gasps> I think this is the palette that I really liked when I originally. Yes, this palette was a palette I loved. I have to. Um, this this color is gorgeous to me. It's called Cairo. This color is gorgeous to me. It's called Cairo. If you guys hear my son, I apologize. He is literally in the hallway. Like right there um playing so yeah and then this one is the nubian 2 it is in the packaging eee, i'm so excited like the makeup lover in me is everything how long is this video i don't want this video too long um so let's just open she oh these colors are everything they are perfect fall colors and i definitely could use the col these colors for like my book look tutorials Okay, okay, okay. The next box is this one. I'm trying not to spill my coffee. I don't think I can pick this one up. Can I? It's this box, so we're just gonna rip it open. Um, I'm just, I'm definitely going to send her another text. So, sis, expect another text. Um, by time y'all, by time y'all see this video, I would have already texted her and everything. But um, okay, guys. So I got the box open. The books look so lovely. So I see a package in here. I don't. I don't know what this is. Oh, more makeup. Okay, okay. I'm sorry, you guys. So this little envelope was inside. So there's more makeup. <gasps> really, sis? No, 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 no. I just... These are all palettes that, like... And, and the, the funny thing is that when I get makeup sent, it's always stuff that has been on my list. Like, I have an actual list on my computer I, I probably have it in a notebook too but i don't know where my notebook is i have a list of like products that i really want to include in my kit and every time i get makeup sent to me it's something on that list i kid you not firstly first first things first is the naked three palette like i have the naked the original palette and i also have the small naked palette like come on so oh she's pretty she is pretty rose gold kind of colors we love we love we love we love the makeup lover is excited i have a two-faced white white chocolate is my thing i didn't even know they had a white chocolate bar palette so um yes but it says white chocolate bar on it <gasps> There's a mint chocolate, there's a raspberry rose, there's a frosted apricot, there's a lavender cake. First of all, there's lavender. Let me see if I can, like, show you guys without having a glare. Okay, this lavender cake right here, come on now. I, I can do something. I will find a way to use this color. But I love this mint chocolate. I love this uh, frosted apricot, I think it is. It's just gorgeous. They are lighter shades, but um, I could definitely find a use of, for them, if not on me, on my clients for sure. I like these. So gorgeous so gorgeous um and then i have the nirvana anastasia palettes <gasps> Ooh. i still prefer the other one from um jackie Ina that palette but this palette is screaming to the girly girl in me because it has like lots of pinks and purples and stuff like that so that is cute i cannot wait to play with this palette sis you feed my makeup love okay so on to the book so First one is Dragon Spell by Donna K. Paul. I did talk about this book before because we were going to buddy read it and I never got a chance to actually get to it. I think that was during the month where I just was not feeling any type of reading, like reading for that month. I don't remember what month it was we were going to buddy read this, but this was one of those months where I just was not feeling reading. I was just in a slump. Not a slump, but I just, I didn't, I didn't care to read. So I never got a chance to read it. 
so i know she said she did enjoy it but she didn't want to keep it um because it is middle grade so i definitely wanted to give it a go and actually read the book myself and then have a conversation about it because i love dragons it's christian fantasy so yes the next book is Curio by Evangeline Denmark. Now, she had ranted about this book. And this is a book I had on my Goodreads TBR for a long time. So, since she was giving it up, I said, I'll take it off her hands because I wanted to read it. Um, but she she ranted about this book and I was cracking up when I watched her video. So, um, I'm a little skeptical because me and Steph definitely have, like, the same reading taste. So, we'll see how i feel about it we'll see but i like the cover it's really nice it gives me and um I, I think she said she wasn't into steampunk i enjoy steampunk novels that's definitely something i'm into so i might enjoy this a little more than her because i don't mind steampunk as a genre i love it um so we'll see we'll see is there anything under the cover i love anything that's under the cover no but it is dual toned um so i like that spine so i'm excited i'm excited is there a map in here i like books with maps no there's no map does this one have a map I'm one of those people that I always look for, like, the extra stuff. <gasps> there are tiny dragons. I'm sorry. Yes, there's a map. Map in this one. And tiny dragons. I love dragons. Okay. This next book was another book that we were probably going to buddy read, but we ended up not buddy reading this. I think we ended up reading another book. Um, so it's Unblemished by Sarah Ella, another book I have on my reading TBR for Goodreads. Um, she was giving it up, so of course, and I love the cover. I don't know if it's, like... It looks like a purplish color to me, but um, it's YA and I want to read it. So, yes. I love the iridescence to this. I don't like this color, though. I like the spine, but I don't really care for this taupey color. It's weird to me. But, um, ooh, what's that? <gasps> maps. We love maps. I love maps in a book. Didn't I say this already? Yes, I did. But we have Unblemished. Okay, so this next book I actually have an arc of. The author sent me an arc because I joined a for a blog tour years ago. Um, and it's Bless the Prodigal Daughter by A.L. Bryant. I did read this book before. I did enjoy it. But I have an arc and I wanted to finish copies. So she was giving hers up. So I was like, yes. I believe there is also a sequel coming out to this. I'm not sure if the author already published it. I actually should probably contact the author and figure that out. But um, yeah, we have Bless. This is sort of a Christian sci-fi dystopian i don't i don't know um this is based on um matthew 5 6 or it it has like scriptures at the top of like certain chapters if i'm not mistaken I, like i said i read this book years ago um when did this book come out it doesn't even say when this book came out but i know that for a fact my copy is an arc and um i like having arcs but i also like having finished copies yeah this doesn't say the year but i can't remember i'll throw the year on the screen but um this book okay so formal books put their box aside okay so the first one is the skin map by stephen r lawhead a bright empires novel um and it just sounded interesting when she talked about it honestly i don't remember much about what she said in that video i'm not gonna lie but it sounded interesting the cover looks great and um i do want to read it it's fantasy i love fantasy i'm trying to get into christian fantasy um i'm a fantasy lover doesn't matter the genre so i figured if i love fantasy so much why not try out more christian fantasy because my number one favorite christian fantasy author as of right now is morgan l bussey the ravenwood saga trilogy is the bomb the bomb so um we have the skin map it says kit I think that's how you say it. You know what? I'm going to read a little blurb at the top instead of the synopsis. So the blurb says, It's the ultimate quest for the ultimate treasure, chasing a map tattooed on a human skin across an omniverse of intersecting realities to unravel the future of the future. That sounds interesting to me, so got it. Okay, these next two books are in a series, and I think she said she she liked it enough, but I think she said something, it was something with the writing, if I'm not mistaken. Um, like I said, click the eye to go to her unhaul video, Um, but it's The Fall of Lucifer by Wendy Alec. It's the first book in The Chronicles of Brothers, and then the sequel is The First um, Judgment. So, I requested for the, 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 the two books from her. I believe they're epic fantasies or something like that. It says three arch three archangels, three brothers, one turned renegade, a sweeping epic of origins and mysteries. The fall of Lucifer tells a tell, tells a tale older than the universe itself, set in opulent palaces and frightening hell worlds. This is a timeless saga of doubt, of demons and angelic warriors, of obsessive love and treason, and of an ancient evil that knows no bounds. Sounds interesting. Again, I'm trying to get into more fantasy that's Christian based, but um, I think she said she liked the first book, but it was something with the writing. Don't quote me. I'll put exactly what she said on the screen because I, I can't remember right now, but I got it. 
All right. So the last book is one I, I think I said I wanted to try because it did sound interesting. I'm not sure, but it is Amish. So I have maybe one or two Amish books on my shelves. I'm not a big fan of Amish novels simply because when I was growing up um, and I was interested in Christian fiction at the time, the only Christian fiction books I found were Amish based and they were not pleasing. They were about little 12 year olds getting married to 33 year old men, looking at these men's bodies. It was just... It was a little weird for me. Um, I don't know much about the Amish culture. I've heard things. I don't know how true they are. I don't I don't really know. I'm not really interested in learning too much about it as of right now because I'm still a little hesitant. I will eventually learn about the culture, of course, but I don't know. There's something about Amish books that turn me off. But I do own, I think, one or two on my bookshelves. And then this one sounded really interesting to me when she read it. So um it's called Hester on the Run. It's part of Hester's Hunt for Home, book one by Linzer. By Byler? Byler. Um, and it says, A Romance Set in Colonial America by best-selling Amish author. And, um, yeah, she kind of looks like a black woman to me, which is another reason why I thought it was cool. So, I don't really know much about it. I, I don't. But I know when she talked about it, it sounded really good. So, I hope I enjoyed it. So that's the last book I got in the box. Okay, guys. So that is it for the September book haul slash unboxing. Again, thank you so, 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 so much. So much to my sis. I, I love her so much. She is amazing. Stephanie, you rock. Like, seriously. Books and makeup. My two joys. Okay, my two loves. If you want... My two loves are books and makeup. Like, makeup is actually, like, what I do, like, as a job on the side. But I also love makeup as just, like, a makeup lover. I haven't worn makeup in a long time. I miss wearing makeup. So I am going... I'm getting into the process of getting back into wearing makeup. Because between her and Leona... They are like my makeup lovers as well. So, yes. Uh, the books, of course, I got to just figure out how I'm going to fit them on my bookshelf. But that's a whole nother story. So, we're not going to talk about that. But, um, yeah. That's it for this haul. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much again, Steph. I love you so much. Obviously, you would have seen all of my texts by now. But, um, yeah. That's it for this video. If you guys want to see reviews on any of these books, let me know. If you haven't seen my reading blog for Tessa um Afshaw's Pearl in the Sand click the eye on the screen I have done a previous review of the book so you can also click on the eye on the screen for that video but that's it for this video so I'm gonna go finish my little sip of coffee here and um go relax because I'm a little hot just a little hot I, I can't put my air on right now so I'm a little hot I'll probably go sit outside and do some reading because I'm currently in the middle of Judah's Wife by Angela Hunt which I am thoroughly enjoying I uh, that book is so good it's, it's really good it's looking like a four star read I really enjoy Angela Hunt's writing, but it's always something with her books that I just, I can't give it a five star. I think the only book I gave five stars from her so far is Bathsheba. Perfection. My book review on that is still coming soon, but that is it for this video. I'm going to stop rambling, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!